uh, welcome viewers and my dear uh, students uh, as of now uh, we have discussed uh, metal casting and welding uh, subject in you know, module 1 uh, we have studied some sand molding techniques so it comprises of uh, definitions classifications of manufacturing process that was followed uh, with uh, sand molding process then we have learned a different sand molding techniques and properties of sand mold and uh, ingredients then binders we is required to get a perfect mold cavity then that was followed uh, by uh, patterns then cores different types of cores and methods of making cores then sand molding machines and uh, gating systems and risers okay these are all the uh, elements that was there in module 1 we have discussed this information in the previous session are uh, in the second module i uh, uh, will be learning uh, uh, second module concept that is melting and metal mold casting methods so here uh, the uh, subject or this particular syllabus comprises of uh, casting using metal molds casting using metal molds it comprises of different methods that is gravity mold casting pressure die casting so here the pressure die casting can be classified into two types that is low pressure die casting then high pressure die casting so here again the high pressure die casting is further classified into two types that is cold chamber die casting and hot chamber die casting so here were the main difference between the low pressure die casting and high pressure die casting is the intensity of pressure being applied during solidification say for example in the low pressure die casting we have uh, we used to apply uh, a range of 1 newton per millimeter square of pressure during solidification whereas in high pressure die casting we will be applying a range of 7 to 500 newton per millimeter square of pressure uh, during solidification process okay that is the main difference between low pressure die casting and high pressure die casting this high pressure die casting can be classified into two types that is cold chamber die casting and hot chamber die casting then what will be the difference uh, between cold chamber die casting and hot chamber die casting process so the main difference is the furnace is away from the system whereas the furnace is integrated in the system that is the difference between cold chamber die casting and hot chamber die casting okay then the next uh, method is centrifugal casting process then squeeze casting slust casting then tyxo casting then continuous castings these are all the different methods associated with the casting using metal molds okay so uh, right now uh, we have discussed sand molding techniques then we are switching over to the casting using metal molds then uh, what what is the main drawback of sand molding technique uh here the main drawback of sand molding technique is so here we need to prepare separate mold and its cavity for each and every cycle okay and the process uh, if, uh, let me explain once again the sand molding process here in the sand molding uh, process we are using patterns patterns are the replica of the product to be produced so first you place the pattern okay inside the cope or drag boxes then fill the sand plus ingredients such as binder and additives then ram it okay then you take out the pattern so the cavity takes the shape of the pattern so this uh, sand cavity is the placed and once you establish the gating and rising systems then you can pour the hot metal or liquid metal okay then after solidification process you can take out the product called cast that is what the concept of sand molding technique so here after solidification we used to break the uh, cope and drag boxes and that particular mold cavity okay that is no lang longer useful for the next cycle so in order to avoid such consequences we, are, we, are, we will be switching over to the permanent molds or metal molds 
okay here once again i'll repeat this is uh, in a uh, main drawback of the sand mold is the separate mold for each and every cast okay and obviously the labor requirement is very high in case of sand molding process then cost of production is obviously high then productivity will be low so in order to uh, optimize these three parameters we are switching over the process from sand mold to metal molds then what is the speciality of metallic molds then so metallic mold is also called as permanent mold okay this particular permanent mold is made out of cast iron then uh, carbon steel then copper okay these are all the three different or some other range of materials or metals or alloys being used to create a cavity okay that is the uh, uh, process involved here then here uh, obviously surface finish will be very high in terms of microns you can get so that would avoid the further uh, machining process or the surface finish process then the you, you could achieve higher mechanical properties and this particular metallic mold or permanent molds are suitable for small and medium size uh, cast process or uh, or the small and medium size of cast so uh, let us have a look or uh, we need to differentiate the sand mold and metallic mold see here this is the sand uh, mold it has got the mold cavity this cavity is obtained through pattern so this is cavity this is box cope box that has been filled with sand and ingredients sand plus ingredients okay for this particular cavity we will be pouring hot metal after solidification you can take out the product then you are going to break this because while taking a particular product we are going to break this particular sand mold whereas in a metallic mold there are permanent mold the same mold is made out of cast iron or carbon steel or copper so this is made this is made out of cast iron or carbon steel or copper so this is a cavity made out of these materials for this particular cavity you are pouring hot molten metal so here after solidification you can take out the product from the cavity you are not supposed to break this a uh, particular mold as this particular mold is made out of engineered materials okay such as carbon steel copper or cast iron okay that is the main difference between sand mold and metallic mold okay then uh, let us take up the first uh, method in the permanent uh, mold process or metallic mold process is gravity mold casting so as i said uh, earlier here this particular process uh, or the uh, mold is made out of permanent uh, methods using different engineered metals here this is the it uh, uh, mold it has got two holes so this is the mold cavity okay this is uh, you can next step is you can join these two holes then you can pour hot molten metal after solidification you would get the product called cast so here uh, the gravity so the metal is poured into the mold cavity by virtue of the gravity okay the fl metal flow taking place uh, due to the virtue of gravity that's why we used to call this particular process as gravity casting before pouring the hot metal we must heat or preheat this metallic molds okay so uh, this uh, using this method you could manufacture different automotive components or aerospace components 
and uh, different uh, components associated with the mechanical engineering system. Okay, that is the uh, concept of gravity casting. The next process is low pressure die casting. Let us take up this one. Low pressure die casting. Low pressure die casting process. So this particular drawing uh, depicts the working principle of low pressure die casting. So it has got top die, this is bottom die, this is cavity. So through this particular channel you can send compressed air okay and it has got a furnace that is made out of electric uh, electric furnace electric resistance furnace it has got electrical coils and this is the crucible or a particular uh, uh, chamber where you can place the solid ingots or raw materials of uh, metal okay that is being sent to this particular cavity okay once the process starts, this particular furnace is going to change the phase of a particular ingot or raw material from solid to liquid okay, by applying appropriate heat. Okay, once the transformation taking place from solid to liquid, uh, this particular uh, liquid is that is present in the crucible then the compressed air is passed through this particular channel. So this compressed air is acting on the molten metal then that leads to the upward movement of the molten metal. So that is going to fill the cavity like this. Okay. Then after solidification process, so during the solidification process we are applying pressure from the top with a very low pressure that is as I, I mentioned that you could apply 1 Newton per millimeter square of pressure through the top die so that this during solidification you could get the very intricate or very thin structure of the product called cast. So the same cast after the removal of the permanent mold that would result in the final final product or cast okay so this is what the output of this particular process once again I'll repeat it comprises of top die bottom die this is the cavity and this is the compressed air uh, channel okay the process starts with the uh, furnace electric resistance furnace where you can keep the solid uh, ingots okay or the raw products then after application of appropriate heat so that metal uh, transformation the phase transformation taking place from solid to liquid then upon uh, conversion you can send the compressed air through this particular channel so in turn that is going to apply pressure on the surface so that leads to upward movement of the molten metal then that is going to fill the cavity okay so this after solidification during solidification process we need to apply some sort of pressure of the range 1 newton per millimeter square then after solidification you can take out the product that would take the shape of the cavity that is considered to be the final product or cast that is the concept of low pressure die casting process the next concept is uh, cold chamber die casting process so here this is cold chamber die casting process. So as I said earlier the furnace is away from the cavity okay whereas in the hot chamber die casting the furnace is integrated within the system okay. So here it has got a fixed die and movable die this is the cavity this is ejector ejector pin okay this is plunger and this is cylinder okay this is the uh, sprue where you can pour molten metal 
okay so here uh, the molten metal is being poured here the plunger is moving forward up till here okay this molten metal is going to fill the cavity okay so this plunger is um, pushed until here okay then during solidification process you can apply uh, uh, some sort of pressure that is uh, of the order 7 to 500 newton per millimeter square then after solidification process you can uh, remove the uh, this particular uh, product through ejector pins then th this process would result the product like this this is the final product final product or cast produced by cold chamber die casting process uh, in the previous session we were talking about die casting process in order to overcome this sand molding uh, drawbacks we have considered the die casting process where we are using a permanent molds okay we have got different uh, methods uh, in this particular uh, process that is gravity uh, die casting methods and uh, pressure die casting methods uh, and uh, it has got again two types that is cold die casting and hot die casting process then again the uh, the classification is uh, based on the uh, situation or i mean uh, the location of furnace so here by virtue of gravity the molten metal is poured into the uh, mold cavity then that particular concept is called uh, gravity die casting method whereas in uh, pressure die casting uh, process we are uh, we will be classifying that particular process as cold die uh, casting method and hot die casting method so in cold die casting method uh, the furnace is is situated away from the system so the uh, pressure applied is of the order of 1 newton per millimeter square whereas in uh, hot uh, die chamber uh, casting uh, uh, we will be applying uh, a high more pressure and the uh, furnace is integrated with the system let us see how actually uh, this hot chamber die casting works okay so this is the pictorial representation of hot chamber die casting process so it has got a movable die and this is a fixed die this is movable movable die this is fixed die okay and this is the cavity okay this is the cavity to be filled okay and it has got a goose neck okay a component is called goose neck and uh, at the end of the goose neck you have got a nozzle nozzle and through this particular mechanism you can uh, make the upward and downward downward movement of this particular goose neck okay this is melting pot this is melting pot and this is burner burner okay these are all the components of hot chamber die casting okay so let us start with the process that is here initially this particular gooseneck is dipped inside the uh, furnace the furnace comprises of uh, liquid hot metal so this hot metal is uh, getting enter into this particular uh, gooseneck okay as the compressed air is feeding to this particular gooseneck so that that can push the molten metal to this particular cavity okay so the solidification is about to complete then the compressed air pressure is taken back again this uh, gooseneck is go to its original position this upward and downward movement of the gooseneck is controlled through this particular mechanism okay so this is how uh, this particular hot chamber die casting method works as i said earlier in the hot chamber die casting process the furnace is integrated with the system the furnace is integrated with the system okay the uh, output of this particular process is this is what the product this is what the product 
this is what the product we have manufactured through the hot chamber die casting process since the cavity has got this similar shape so this is the uh, nozzle the function of the nozzle is to increase the uh, velocity and decrease the pressure so this the particular no gooseneck nozzle is push the uh, this particular uh, hot metal into the mold cavity so after solidification process you can get this particular product this is what the concept of hot chamber die casting process so uh, the next question is uh, what are all the range of materials that could be accord uh, accommodate to uh, have the casting process with respect to hot chamber die casting you, you can have zinc alloys you can have titanium magnesium lead based alloys can be used for the casting process that is what the concept of hot chamber die casting process the next step is or the next segment is centrifugal casting process so centrifugal casting process is divided into three types that is true centrifugal casting process then semi centrifugal casting process and centrifuge casting okay here the classification is uh, based on the centrifugal force being acted during the casting process okay so here the first one is true centrifugal casting so this is the uh, pictorial representation of centrifugal uh, casting process centrifugal force in the sense that is outward force okay so that is outward force being acted on the body here the body is uh, this mold cavity this this is mold cavity or the mold this is the mold okay then this is the uh, drive shaft and these are all the rollers okay this is all the rollers and this is the sprue and through this sprue the molten metal is getting into the system then that the due to the by virtue of the centrifugal force uh, with the, that particular uh, uh, mold is rotated with uh, uh, range of 300 to 3000 rpm so that always throw uh, this molten metal towards the wall of the mold okay so that can hold the uh, molten metal until that is going to solidify and that would results in the thin uh, shell of a particular product okay that is the concept of true centrifugal casting process so here uh, the process uh, how can we control the thickness of the that particular product the thickness of the product can be controlled by uh providing the appropriate amount of the molten metal so as you are all aware that the centrifugal force is mathematically expressed as mv square by r where m is the mass of the molten metal and v is the velocity and r is the radius of the component okay so this thickness is directly proportional or that is in correlation with the mass of the fluid that is or the mass of the molten metal that is being passed to this particular mold the mold is rotated with the uh, 300 to 3000 rpm okay this molten metal experiencing the centrifugal force so in turn that is going to throw away the molten metal towards the wall and due to the centrifugal force that is going to hold the uh, molten metal so up till the solidification process completes okay then after uh, then you can uh, have the uh, uh, casting uh, or cast or product okay then this particular process eliminates the need for cores the function of the core is to provide a, a hollow uh, shape okay in the solid casting process in a solid casting you can if you want to have a particular hole or hollow shape then you can have the uh, component called core but here since this particular process is designed to um, produce uh, the components like pipes tubes and bushings liners and rings so because of this reason this cores are not required for this particular process okay that is the concept of true centrifugal casting since the axis of the rotation of the mold is about the horizontal axis that's why this particular process is called horizontal true centrifugal casting if the, if you locate or orient this particular mold with respect to the vertical axis then we can call this particular process as vertical centrifugal casting okay that is the concept of uh, true centrifugal casting the second uh, sub subclassification of centrifugal casting is semi centrifugal casting here we are not supposed to use the permanent mold we are uh, using sand molds 
okay this class classification is based on the centrifugal force being acted while uh, pro processing the material okay don't get confused with uh, die casting and sand molding okay so here in the uh, semi centrifugal casting you have got a sand mold that is this is scope and this is drag this is core this is mold cavity okay this is through sprue the molten metal is getting into the system okay here the concept is the central axis being vertical and concentric the central axis is being vertical and concentric with the axis of the rotation okay so uh, that is the first concept then uh, this uh, the speed of this particular mold is less than the centrifugal speed okay that is one more uh, important uh, thing and the product which may be uh, considered or which may be produced with the help of semi centrifugal castings are gear blanks wheels and pulleys okay this is this is the concept of semi centrifugal casting okay so the next concept is centrifuge casting this is centrifuge centrifuge casting so here this is the top sectional weave okay the axis of the mold cavity does not coincide with the axis of the rotation whereas here the axis of the cavity is coinciding with the axis of the rotation whereas here in the centrifuge casting the axis of the mold cast cavity does not coincide with the axis of the rotation that is the main difference between the centrifugal and centrifuge casting process okay that is suitable for non symmetrical casting okay if you want to have a uh, sculptures if you want to have some irregular shapes which has got a uh, unsymmetrical uh, nature then you can employ or you can consider this centrifuge casting process so the mold cavity is located away from the axis of the rotation okay so here this is what is sprue this is sprue through for this particular location you are feeding the uh, molten metal then the molten metal is getting into the mold cavity through the gating systems so okay after solidification you can take out the product so that is the mold cavity is located away from the axis of the rotation this is the axis of uh, axis of the rotation here but the mold cavities are away from the away from the axis of the rotation that is what the concept of centrifuge casting the next method is squeeze casting or liquid metal forging squeeze casting or liquid metal forging so the uh, process has got uh, uh, two components that is top die this is bottom die and this top die is connected to ram ram and this is molten metal okay this is ejector pin okay so here this particular drawing uh, depicts the uh, working of squeeze casting uh, here it has got top die bottom die ejector molten metal and ram this top die is connected to ram that is going to apply the appropriate pressure to compress or to squeeze this molten metal okay so this squeezing is also considered to be a liquid metal forging method okay so this particular top die is come in contact with the molten metal with the appropriate pressure then that leads to uh, the close of the uh, cycle okay then ultimately that leads to the formation of a product like this this is the product obtained through squeeze casting so here the top and bottom die between top and bottom die it has got a molten metal in the uh, with the help of uh, bottom uh, sorry top die that is going to exert pressure on the molten metal that is uh, it's already been poured the molten metal which is already been poured okay so between that cavity that uh, uh, that liquid metal getting into the cavity then that leads after solidification process you can expect this kind of product that is the concept of squeeze casting or liquid metal forging method the next uh, process is 
slush casting slush casting so here it has got a die okay this is permanent die and this is ladle okay it has got a molten metal the molten metal is poured into the cavity okay so here whenever you uh, feed the uh, molten metal it is going to uh, come in contact with the wall of the cavity okay so before solidification just you invert this invert this particular uh, system then uh, before solidification you can withdraw the uh, molten metal and the solidification uh, the or the metal the which is come in contact with the wall of the uh, pattern or wall of the mold cavity then that forms the thin shell okay that forms the thin thin shell okay after uh, removing this particular component through ejector pin that would result in the product like this okay so this slush casting can be employed to have statues or to manufacture toys or lamp posts these are all the examples of uh, the product which is being uh, created using slush casting so here the castings with external features having aesthetic value are made using slush casting once again i'll repeat slush casting it has got a permanent die okay ejector pin and ladle uh, once you pour the molten metal into the uh, mold cavity then the solidification begins at the wall of the cavity okay okay before solidification of the whole molten metal you just you invert this particular system okay so that you can withdraw the molten metal the retained or solidified uh, molten metal is come in contact with the wall is uh, form the a thin shell the thin shell is considered to be the product for this slush casting method the same casting could be used or employed to have the statues toys and lamp pots okay this is what the concept of slush casting